Good morning and praise the Lord. It's another beautiful Sunday morning and we're so grateful for the gift of life, the opportunity to be in God's presence. Um, we're so excited to have you people joining us. Uh, once again, welcome. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, we just want to welcome you into this place, welcome you into um, our homes where we're listening to this uh, broadcast, into every single place where our teenagers are this morning. And that, Lord, you will minister to them. That, Lord, you will speak in that still small voice, just guiding their lives, walking with them, and, um, and, and, and just ministering, Lord, even to the situations that they are in. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. We pray that you will use us as your vessels, that, Lord, we will glorify you, we will praise you, um, and that um, the discussion we'll get to have will be edifying, Lord, and that your name will be glorified through it all. We thank you even for the gift of technology. We just commit technology into your hands. The Lord, this ministry, Lord, will, will, will continue well, and that you will be praised through the work of the guys who are behind the camera and um, their tireless efforts to ensure that... Um, ministry still continues we thank you and we praise you in jesus name we pray amen Amen. once again welcome to today's broadcast um we're so grateful that you get to take time to join us and uh just be with us for for this session um just thinking back to the past three weeks um looking back at the whole issue of success um my prayer our prayer as we are seated here is that um you've gotten to make uh, decisions that uh, are worthwhile when it comes to issues of what you put your heart and your mind to, um, I know we, we brought up issues of failure being sometimes a stepping stone or something just to wake us up in our journey to success. Also, just to think about eternity as the bigger picture because, yeah, this world is, is, is very temporary. But even as we're in this world, um, what is God calling us to? And that's what we got to see last week and how we can get to those, um, those we call them peaks. Uh, but how you just achieve tho- that temporary success. And we're beginning a new um, uh, a new session, a new topic. Um, and today we're going to start off by you know, just having a discussion about um, spiritual maturity. What does spiritual maturity look like? What, 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 what's the point of us talking about spiritual maturity to you guys as teenagers? That's a discussion we're having today. And once again, welcome. I'd love to bring in Rev to just uh, say hi and introduce to us this, the session. Hello everyone, praise the Lord, it's good uh, to have you once again. Um, the topic that we are having today, just like all other topics, we have, get, we have gotten them straight from your requests. You have been requesting us since the time of CPR, the sexuality talk, uh, the, mental, the mental health talk, uh, what was the other one, success talk, all those have been coming from you and we've been taking them very seriously because it means that it means um it actually means something in your lives and you want us to talk about it so that we can shape a part of your being and so it's today we are coming to you with a lot of humility and a lot of love to share with you with what spiritual maturity is all about as you all know the word of god reminds us that jesus grew up in what in wisdom in stature and in favor with every other being, and also with God. And something to pick out of this is that there was growth. There was growth. And it is very uh, unlikely that anybody is going to start anything and we do not anticipate growth. Even in your physical self, you know. Uh, I know there are some people who have been considered uh, stunted, have been stunted growth, I know when I was a teenager, I, my aunt used to call me a Somali because I was so slim. I seemed not to be going anywhere, and yet I was eating like an ant, eh? always eating, eating. The food was just going inside there, and that was, it was not being digested. But with all those challenges, we know that uh, physical growth is always uh, automatic. But the, you still have to put in some, some good work. You have to eat, right? You have to exercise. If you want to, to have a good body, you'll have to exercise. What else do you have to do for the body? Um, even hormones. Even hormones, the way they play their part in, the, in, in your body, um, it will depend with if there are medications that you are taking, if you are doing exercise, the people around you, are you happy? If you are not happy, 
all those things. The same case with the spiritual man. The spiritual man also grows. It will be very unlikely that you will start in Sunday school and your Sunday school teachers will expect you just to remain on the seats and never to do anything. They'll feed you with the word. And when you come to the teenagers, uh, the teens minister and the teens coordinator will be expecting you to get to another level. When you go to the youth, they don't expect you to be a bench warmer. And maybe you might have been a bench warmer all along, but when you get to the adults, you cannot continue being a bench warmer after all the studying that you've gone through. In fact, if you were to put them together and equate them to a, a degree or a master's or an education out there, probably you've attained a PhD, maybe like two PhDs from all the Sundays you've attended since you started life, right? And so today, we feel it is very important for us to discuss spiritual maturity so that you can uh, do a self-reflection on where you are. Are you growing? Are you stunted? Are you still a dwarf? Yeah? And we will be looking at a number of stuff that we'll be discussing. And when, when it comes to maturity, uh, I think that number one thing that we always want to look at is the character. You know, to be able to watch your total, right? Uh, behave like yourself. There was another thing that you said. What was the other one? Grow up. <laughs> yeah. That is the worst. <laughs> That's the worst thing to ever hear. Grow up. Be mature. Act your age, you know? And um, I, I remember this one time. I think, I don't know whether I was watching or listening, but there is a young girl uh, who was being um, made fun of by a young boy. And the young girl uh, was being told that, you know, her body was small and she was not growing. And, you know, this young girl with all the wisdom that only comes from above, she says that, you know, my body is going to change. My body is slowly changing. But if you don't act on your character, it might never change and it will affect your relationships and even your future and even your grown-up life and all the way to, to, to the time that you die and you leave this world. But for me, my physicality can actually change. And look at even the attitudes that we have towards one another. You know, uh, it's important for us to look at our attitudes because attitudes can change, you know. Um, maybe somebody who has some teenagehood, we know that it comes with a bit of pimples here and there. And we might make fun of the pimples that you have. Uh, but remember, it will change. But the attitude of those other guys, it might never change unless they make a deliberate effort to doing what? Mm. To changing it. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting you say that because I know some of the things... Um, that our teenagers some, most of the time will struggle with is um, is 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 what you're saying the pimples and probably mm. that that transition and we, we, with the teens we talk a lot about transitions mm. and those transitions are never easy yeah and I think those are times when we are also getting to build our characters you're yeah. saying mm. so that the focus is not on the physical um, you know, challenges I would say but rather a time when mm. we can build ourselves so that we have a certain moral code mm. that when people look at us, they're like, this is somebody who is mature. Mm. Sometimes I ask our teenagers this question. Assume your parents would walk into a supermarket and throw a tantrum. Mm. That no, this is what I want. And they're rolling on the floor and <laughs> kicking. And the reactions I get from our teenagers, they're like, I would, I would run away. Yeah. And I just started asking, why, why would, would you run away? Like, why, why is that a big deal? And they're like, True. that's not adult-like. And I think that's what you're saying. Act your age. Act your age. Um, Act your age. Our character, mm. I think, uh, uh, sh shouts a big message to the world. True. The way I talk, the way I carry out myself, mm. uh, carry out my, uh, myself and mm. my activities and the mm. things that I'm doing, I think it does communicate a lot about who I am. Mm. Um, and, and being that we're talking about spiritual maturity, mm. I think th that character is, you know, I think Paul, it's Paul who says, follow me as I follow Christ. And if that's we're, we're uh, copying Christ, that if that's a character, that's the example that we have. Yeah. I think that's that shows that there is some spiritual maturity. That's you know, true. Yeah. I, I can't agree more. And you know, when you say, follow me as I follow Christ, there is a deep sense of drawing closer to Jesus. Mm. And drawing closer to Jesus is growing mature. And as you are growing mature, we are saying that you are starting to look more like your father. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. even when you are growing up, people start saying, like my child, my little girl right now, people can't tell whether she looks like the mom or looks like the dad. 
But as she's growing up, you'll start seeing the canoes that is sharp like mine, I hope. <laughs> uh, ears that are big like mine, I'm praying. You know, uh, um, as you grow up, these things will start showing slowly by slowly. And growing closer to Christ is the most important thing in life. It is much bigger than even what you were discussing last week. Success in life. It is much bigger. Because when you succeed in growing closer to Christ, other things will start making sense around you. You know? Um, you'll start understanding your purpose. You'll start understanding the will of God in your life. And the struggles that probably you would have gone through to achieve, they disappear. Mm. They just simmer away. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, um, you know you're saying for you, ask when you anyone, anyone sees our son and he's like, ah, only babake too. And it hurts my wife. <laughs> she also wants to but eat. I see a bit of your wife in Zag. <laughs> well, you're the first person, actually, one of the few people to say that. But most people are like, ah, only babake, it's just uh. dad. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely that that effort that we, we put in mm. to look more like Christ, mm. to be more like Christ, to mm. behave more like Christ would. Everything you do in life flows from everything you are in Christ. Mm. Everything you do in Christ flows from everything you are in Christ. Mm. Yeah, that's deep. That's really deep. Uh, is, is that you who, who wrote down number you copied from somewhere? I have no <laughs> idea where I got that from. But that's I know yeah, <laughs> it, makes a, it makes a lot of sense. Especially when it comes to maturity. Yeah. Uh, everything you are in Christ, everything you are in life mm -hmm. flows from everything you are in Christ. Mm. We relax for a little bit and let it <laughs> <laughs> let it sink. Yes. <laughs> but as as we let it sink, I, I would like to give um, an assignment for the young people today. As you are at home, the Bible talks about immature and mature people in the Bible. Many characters. Um, in the live chat down there. Why don't you give us examples of people in the Bible who you thought were immature or mature, okay? Uh, be it in the Old Testament, be it in the New Testament, just share with us characters in the Bible who you consider at some point they acted immature and some other point they acted quite mature. Mm, All right? As we go ahead and uh, start discussing um, the five topics that would would discuss the whole meaning and the whole aspect of maturity in Christianity. Mm. You've, you've, you've led us very well in, in, in that first one, the character one. Mm. Um, that uh, our characters, and I love that I still, I'm sti it's still simmering. Yeah. Everything we are in life fro flows from everything. We, everything we are in life flows, flows from, from everything, everything we, we are, are in, in Christ. Christ. Yeah. So after character, Rev, mm. what, what, what else do you think um, kind of is a mark of spiritual maturity? Well, first of all, maybe there's somebody who's asking, and what is this character? Mm -hmm. Well, a character is an eternal moral code. It is a behavioral change. Um, it is where we expect you, because you know one of the things that marks an immature Christian is somebody who is always blaming others. It's like in our homes. When you find every time when you do something wrong and mom comes asking, the only thing you can do when he comes, ni nani, ni nani, ni nani, ni nani, like my son and my niece right now, that's what they play, that's how they play me. Now figure, who, 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 who broke this glass? Ni nani, ni nani, ni nani. <laughs> Man, I have to change my face. You have to tell me the truth. I don't like liars. Tell me who it is. Moja hajifiche, angojesa ile umgina yu karibu, yotakuita kambiro, jodadi nani, ni nani. So that blame game can always tell you that you are dealing with, ch with, with children. And so when it comes to um, maturity in character, we are saying that you stop blaming and you start repenting. Okay? You start taking responsibility for where you have uh, done wrong. And even if you've not done wrong, Jesus gave us the best of examples. Like the big brother he is, he took up responsibility for our sins. He died for us. So you'll not be the first one if your brother broke the glass and is refusing. You'll not be the first one to take a beating for the sake of peace in the house. Okay? Mm. Maturity comes from deep within the individual. And that's where the character is built. And that's where people get to see Jesus the most. 
And you know, the Bible tells us very clearly that God does not look at the physical. He looks at the heart. Mm. Mm. So that's character. The second one is confidence. Mm. I think w- when you talk about confidence, I imagine the, the timidity sometimes that children have. Mm. There's this one thing my dad told me, that when you, when you meet a child mm. and they're with a mother, what they will do is that they will look at the mother's face. They draw their confidence not on self, but on other people, and mostly the mother or the father. Mm. So if the pa- the, their parent is laughing with this person, mm. the child will be comfortable. They will start walking around, ah. and uh, I mean, this person is safe. Yes. But if the parent has, uh, has anger in their face or mm. fright, mm. they read that, and they will hide behind. Wow. So I think when, when we are children, our confidence doesn't come from self, mm. Our confidence comes from the, 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 the environment that we are in. But I think as we get to mature, and probably this is something um, that in, in our society right now, maybe sometimes our young people lack, is self-confidence, that self-esteem, yeah. where I know my identity is in Christ, mm. that I can walk around with my chest puffed, not because of pride, mm. but because of confidence, knowing That's that... Cool. Ah, minim to you are God. I I'm the son this. of a king. You know. Right. I think that's what I think about when um, I think of confidence. Mm. Mm. Well, when, when I think about confidence, I'm reminded of um, a, a verse we like to speak a lot to our young children mm. and our teenagers. When I was a child, mm-hmm. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Uh, what else did I do? I acted like a child. Yeah. yeah? But when I grew up, I put my childish childish ways behind me. And being shy, and I'm thinking of myself right now, not even you as a teenager, myself when I was a teenager, I was timid, I was shy, I would not want to do a presentation in church, and yet I knew I had some two crazy talents within me. There's a friend of mine who always told me that I had a musical heart. Mm -hmm. I could feel like a beat and even without being taught, give me like a drum and I will start hitting it. When I was young, but I, I never went to nurture that gift. I could have been maybe the most of the teens <laughs> group right now, yeah. but unfortunately I'm not. And so when the Bible tells us that we need to put our childish ways behind us, it is deliberate, it is intentional. You need to look at the things within you that people look at you and say, Uyun him total because of the way he acts or she acts, and push them aside. Decide from this day on, if it's because I live... T- uh, my plate on the table if it's because somebody washes my clothes mm-hmm. if it's because somebody has to wash my room put those, those childish ways behind you you know those small small things that mark you as a child so that people can take you as a mature Christian because nobody wants to have a stunted uh, you know child a stunted friend a stunted parent because a stunted parent is somebody who is not thinking of development for the family. Mm. A stunted tree, for example, if I'm going to plant a tree, and you know I love planting trees, if I'm going to plant a tree and it is one, two, three years, four years down the line, and there's nothing that is happening to that tree, chances are high that this good reverend who loves trees is going to come there with a shovel, remove it, and plant another one. Unless it is an indigenous one, mm. which takes a hundred years or something to grow. But if it is these exotic ones, I'll plant it and give it some, some few years to see whether it is changing. If it's not, out you go. So uh, it is very important for you to show uh, confidence. It is important for you to show um, courage in, in times of, of, um, of timidity and in times when uh, fear is being called for. Um, name it. Think of anything that m- gives you the mark of a child. And think of how you can shed it off so that you can start uh, seemingly looking uh, as a mature Christian in your family, in school, at home, in the community when you're playing with other people. And sometimes it's just as small as if you're playing football as a young boy and you're hit with the ball. You don't start crying, you know. You, you get up and you know, and even laugh about it a little bit. That people don't think you are a what? You are a child. Same case with spiritual maturity. You will be hit from left, right, and center by so many things spiritually. 
But always remember you have a God that sitteth up above who is watching you and always telling you, my son, my daughter, get up, get up. Mm. This is not the end of the race. Get up. Mm. Do not let these older people make you feel intimidated. Get up. I have a journey to go with you. You are the church. Today you are seeing that adult. Tomorrow you are that adult. Mm. If you don't learn the lessons now, you'll be a half-baked adult in future. You know, one of the things that I've loved is when you've said we need to get up, you know, that confidence for us to rise up again. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of teenagers, you know, in a year where things have been very tough. 2020, it's been, tough. It's been a tough year. And it's easy for us to, you know, the year has put us down. It's easy for us to continue putting ourselves down. Yeah. And I think sometimes it just takes the confidence to rise up again, um, confidently knowing who we are in Christ, that identity that we have. That I know who I am in Christ. I can still get up from this. And and, and I think every, um, the, yeah, there's someone who said there is no situation that is, uh, that is a lost case in God's economy. Mm. That it's still an opportunity for us to learn, to rise up and, and live our lives on. And I think it's a, it's a perfect um, reminder for us in this season. That yes, 2020 has beat us down. We are down. But it doesn't mean that we stay down. Mm. We need to have that confidence to rise up again from um, from all the challenges it has come with and to be confident knowing that we are in Christ and that we are Christ's. That's right. Mm. Very interesting because that brings us to the third point. Mm -hmm. Connection. Mm. Connection. <laughs> Very interesting, Gray. Because <laughs> that brings us to the third point yes. and that is connection. Mm. And um, when you think about connection, what comes to your mind? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of how um, in our African sense, we are a very communal, um, we're, we're a very communal society. We're very societal. Like, I don't know whether I'm, I'm making sense, but community is ingrained in our African nature. And I think <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You'd, you'd hear statements like, um, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Yeah. Um, if you want to go, there's this, and if you want to go fast, mm. go Walk alone. alone. Yeah. But if you want to go far, you go with people. That's right. And I, you know, it just points to the, 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 the need for us mm. to build relationships. Yeah. I think about my son right now. Mm. Um, he just knows the three people who live in the house with mm -hmm. him. He knows mom, dad, and he knows the help. You introduce a new person into the house, he starts staring at this person. Like, this I know is not, I don't have a relationship with this person. Yeah. Once of this person comes and takes him, you can imagine what will happen. He'll cry. Same to mine. He will cry. Mm. And I think from, in our childish, in our childish ways, in our mm. childhood ways, mm. It's so hard for us to build relationships. But as we grow, look at our teenagers right now. Sometimes they have a problem because mom and dad don't want me to go play with my friends. Yeah. They, it's, 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 a, it's a natural thing that we develop relationships as we mature yeah. physically. Mm. Now, I think it, 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 it mirrors the same way with our spiritual growth mm. that we need to build relationships that matter and those are the connections that we're talking about you know we yes. keep telling our teenagers choose your friends wisely that's right we we came through um uh, you know our cpr our sexuality sessions mm. you know and so one of the final ones was the, the relationship we have with people and how it affects us mm. and i think that still plays a big role when you're talking about spiritual maturity true um it's easy for the you know if we're not careful people will pull us down mm. if we have the wrong connections mm. so it's about and knowing the positive connections the people around us mm. um and how they affect you know our faith that's true mm. i like that uh you've taken us towards how we need to connect with our um earthly friends earthly families earthly connections there's also the other aspect of connecting with our God. Mm. I think another thing that shows that you are a mature Christian is the fact that you stop depending on yourself more and you start depending on Christ more. Mm. Depend on yourself less, depend on, on God more. That shows more maturity. And how does that come about? Prayer. Yes. You need to find more opportunities to involve God in whatever that you are doing. 
uh, reading the word of God. Mm -hmm. You're getting to know the will of God and you're getting to know, you're getting to get messages from God of what he expects you mm -hmm. to do with this body, especially if the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit, his, his resident mm -hmm. inside your heart. Mm -hmm. Put all those things together and tie them up. You have a good relationship with Christ. You know, there is one I've just remembered. Mm. The life of Peter is very interesting mm. in the Bible. Yeah. You look at Peter, he was he, he was impulsive, he was all over the place. And I think you could see this guy was not, you know, his faith was not yet that strong. Yeah, it was not very formed. It wasn't very formed. You mm. see, when he was when Jesus was there, you know, he's the guy who is he'll talk very quickly, he'll the guy cut off somebody's ear. Mm. I mean, yes, he had the passion, but you could see he hasn't fully gotten there. Mm. And then the Holy Spirit comes down. Mm. No, wait, before even we get there, when Jesus died, what did he, did he do? Went back to fishing. Just true. Because I think he, the, mm. his, his, his foundation just wasn't strong mm. yet. Mm. But Christ spoke into his life. And you see now in Acts, yes. the final thing that happens is the Holy Spirit comes upon him. That's right. And look at who he becomes. He preaches one time, 300, three I'm a 3,000. Yeah, 3, 3,000 get mm. saved. Peter, Peter, this is the same Peter we've been talking about who has all these challenges. Mm. So I think the Holy Spirit plays a very big role also. Mm. Uh, and we need to have a connection with the Holy Spirit. That's right. I know there's a course we are doing together with you. Yeah. Um, and and he, talk, he talks about the, 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 the Holy Spirit and how we need to have this connection with the holy spirit so that we can we can use the gifts he's giving us so that mm. we can you know as a sign of maturity yeah um he gives us the power to do things that god has planned for us that's true so we have the vertical relationship yes that's one connection mm. and that's the major one yes. most important mm. and then the horizontal mm. this one affects this one yes this one affects this one mm. okay so be careful with the relationships that you have around you, the connections that you make, as you mentioned, mm. they will either break you or make you. Yeah. We go to the third one, mm -hmm. fourth one. We've mm -hmm. done character, we've done confidence, mm -hmm. we've done connection, connections, and now we are doing competence. 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 Great. Uh, uh, competence. It, as a Christian, as a mature Christian. When I think of competence, um, I think it's Paul who talks about uh children i mean uh, we don't eat the same food as children mm -hmm. there's, there's something out there's a verse like that if i'm not wrong where he says mm. that as we mature we're not eating the same things that children eat oh yeah the, the milk and the meat yes the milk and the meat that's what's in hebrew oh, it's in hebrew thank yeah. you mm. um i look at my son you know he started off with breast milk mm. got to six months and we're giving him porridge once a day yes kido kido gonna, he's even eating meat we want to our last visit to the doctor she was mm. like she asked us how much meat are you giving him we're like yeah, maybe once a week she's <laughs> like add more add more he needs more iron and we're ah. like yeah we're getting there <laughs> okay ah, yeah so i think the same thing with our uh, with our spiritual life mm. it gets to a point where i need to grow in terms of competence yes that I'll not stick at the same place of learning A, B, C, D. Yes. But I need to get to a point where, as a Christian, mm. I am learning the deeper things of God. I have mm. this friend. We're do I'm doing a leadership uh, program. And there's this friend of... Uh, and he's, the, he's actually the facilitator. But I know mm. him personally. And he says that one of the things that he does with his life is that he, he wants to make sure he's developing physically mentally spiritually socially mm. so every year he gives himself targets mm -hmm. if it's the mental he has to read a specific number of books okay if it's the physical he has to do uh, a triathlon a year uh, he has to do a canoe race every year and mm. he has you need those are his goals for the year mm. when it's his spiritual he knows that i need to take care of my spiritual life by doing one two three things mm. and that's him and I think that's how we get to see this Christian is not at the same place. Yes. This is a Christian who is now consuming the deeper things of God. Mm -hmm. He's engaging the word of God mm -hmm. by, by growing spiritually. Um, and I think all these other things we've talk, spoken about also do you know play a part there. Yes. They are connecting and having the right fellowship and the right interaction with, um, uh, with other people. Mm. And, and they all this show how we get to grow 
in terms of um, our competence. That we're not the same. Our minds are growing. Our our spiritual lives are also growing. Mm. Yeah. Competence. Um, we also are looking at academic competence, mm -hmm. social competence. Mm. We are looking at uh, spiritual complete competence. Mm. And when it comes to spiritual competence, we are looking at certain uh, perimeters like um, are you consistent in coming to fellowship? Mm. Are you consistent in um, reading the word of God, appreciating the true uh, gospel of Christ? Are, are we seeing you appreciating what God is doing in your life? Do you give him the glory? Or are you the kind of people who say, Manzini bidi yangu. Unajua, manzini liso manabidi. I slept. I don't know if your parents used to tell you this, but mine wanilisikia enough times. Unajua ni marangapi tulikuwa tukisoma usiku na migu zetu ndani ya karai. Majibaridi. Dio tusilale. Oh, yes. You heard that? I heard that. And me, I have my own stories to tell my kids. Some <laughs> of the things I did. <laughs> so that we can gain that uh, academic competence. Can get that academic competence. Mm. With competence, we want to see whether you are a fully grown, mature Christian by the way you carry yourself as a Christian. Okay? Mm. And that is the fourth one. Mm. The fifth one, compassion. We are looking at compassion mm. as a sign of Christian maturity. What do you have to say concerning that, Gray? Um, when it comes to compassion, I, I sometimes I feel mm. being sensitive to the people around us. And that sensitivity um, points to the fact that we see the needs, understand the needs, mm. and sort out the needs. Mm. I'm trying to remember who it is that recently um, preached about... Um, uh, J Peter and John as they were getting into the temple. Yes. And he said, the thing is, um, I think it's last Sunday's sermon actually. Mm. The thing is, everyone saw this crippled guy who was seated at the gate every day for I think 20 years or 30 years, I think. And they saw the need, but they did nothing about it. For them, they saw this guy just wants money, they'd throw in a coin. Mm. Um, but what Peter and John did is that they stopped, understood the need, mm. and for them they knew for sure I need to we need to pray for this guy to stand up and walk. That is his biggest need. The others would just see uh ah, take a pesa, they throw in a coin in there. Mm. And I think spiritual that, that, that I think is an evidence of spiritual maturity. Yes. That they're able to stop, understand, yes. and see how do I show compassion to the people around me. It, if you ask me, it's an aspect of um, caring enough mm -hmm. to pray with people. It's an aspect of caring enough mm. to be sympathetic and empathetic mm. and even do discipleship. Yes. Because if I know and I am confident in my faith and the people around me are kind of wishy-washy, it's for me to take time and see, oh gosh, uh, my friend here is uh, is not as strong in terms of his faith mm -hmm. what can i do to walk with him so that siendi binguni peke yangu this mm -hmm. journey of going to heaven i'm not on my own i am walking with the people around me i think god calls us to to care enough to look at the people around us and 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 to um, use the gifts he has given us to use the talents he has given us to use the presence of the holy spirit in our lives so that we are also doing ministry to the people around us that's true. So we are talking about showing care and concern. Mm. Uh, the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke chapter 3, uh, John the Baptist is speaking to a group of people who had come uh, to see him at work. And from verses 7, it says, John said to the crowd coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produced fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out 
of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. That was a very heavy message. So the people asked, what should we do then? The crowd asked John, and John answered. Listen to John's answer. This is what you should do so that the wrath of God does not descend upon you and connects very clearly with what we are talking about, compassion. Mm. That the man with two tunics should share with him who has none. Mm. And the one who has food should do the same. Mm. And that's basically the gospel of repentance. And you know John was all about repentance. Yeah. But apart from repentance, you also needed to accompany your acts of repentance and confession with acts of compassion. compassion yes. It is not just enough to feel sympathy and to feel empathy. It calls for you to go down into your pockets, into your wardrobes, into your, onto your table, into your storehouse, into your family. You know, look for friends who can stand together with a person who is going through a tough time. Because now that makes Christianity mature and whole. So it is not just enough to repent and confess, Gray. Mm. For you to be considered mature, Christ tells us that acts of compassion are a must. Mm. We consider Jesus to have been a very mature, uh, do we say Christian or now? <laughs> <laughs> mature Christian, in faith, maybe. <laughs> mature in faith, mature in his relationship with, with yeah. God, the Father. And look at him. Whenever he went, he did good, the Bible says. Yeah. Again, we know when, the, when, when, when he saw people around him and they were having tough times. Mm. Probably like the 5,000 who yeah. had not eaten and they had come to listen to him. Mm. He immediately saw their need and what does he do? He changes or rather he multiplies the food that the young boy had mm. and he feeds the 5,000 people. Mm. That is compassion. Mm. Great, the only reason Christ acted um, to show uh, miracles in this world was out of compassion. He sees a man who has never seen since he was young, and he gives his eyes back. A woman who has bled for many years, and out of his mercy, just from touching the clock, mm. he goes ahead and releases power and gives, him, gives her the healing that she deserves. Look at all acts of compassion and you, all acts of miracle and you realize they were arising from an act of compassion. So a Christian who doesn't have compassion, not only to fellow human beings, but even to animals, even to the environment, you know, the trees, the birds, if there's something that my dad hates, if there's something that my father hates, is somebody who will go out with a slingshot to hit a bird for the sake of hitting it and he's not doing he has no intention of feeding himself or surviving or anything of that nature but just hitting a bird so that you can see it falling and that's that's it he hates it with all his heart i think it also goes down to the whole thing of poaching killing in the name of sport that is not humane that is not what God has called us to. Mm -hmm. We've been called to show mercy. We've been called to be stewards over this world. We've been called to be our, our brother's keeper. So if we lack these essential uh, attributes and characters within us, mm -hmm. it is going to show uh, the nakedness in us and it is going to expose us to prove that we are only but children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I when I think of compassion, and I just I think I love the way you've said it. You know, you can't go to minister to somebody who has, you know, maybe is uh, is hungry. Yeah, someone doesn't have a home, mm, mm. doesn't have clothes, mm. and I think that's why the actions of compassion are a loud message, mm. a very loud message of our faith. Yes. Because I'll be able to look around and meet somebody's need, mm. and that person will be like, hey, Maze, you're different from people. What you know, many Peter, mm. but you, you have helped me. Why? And then you have an opportunity to share God's word because you are your actions are a ministry to the world. 
those acts of compassion are a ministry. It's true. You've just reminded me of an incident that happened not long ago. Like, um, actually this week on, on was it Monday mm-hmm. or off day? Mm. So I went off to Ngara and I was having something being checked in the car. Uh, not, nothing major, just like a radio thing. And uh, I was seated with the guys who, who normally do that work. And some guy came selling stuff, you know. And um, I think, I don't know, maybe he saw that I'm the one who was the owner of the car. And what he was selling, mm. uh, it was these accessories for vehicles. And so when he came to me, I, I looked at him and he talked to me. He told me, this is what I'm selling. Ngombi asanti, kwa sasa sina pesa, labda siku ingine. There was a guy seated next to me who looked at me after he went and said, Hey, hapo meni bamba, mm-hmm. no, sheng, not <laughs> omtani. Hapo meni bamba, yoko ni different. You know, jomuse mgini angekua hapa, dealing with this issue, hata gambiacha kunisumbua, yoni kama nikona hase, ama nikona vitu zingine. Mm-hmm. But the way you just uh, released him and even told him thank you and even yeah. mwambia tapata mtu mgini wakuzia mbele, that was something different. Yeah. And you know, to me, it was nothing. <laughs> it was normal. But to him, he just had yeah. to mention it. And mm. when you said it, I just had to mention it. It is the small things that you do to people mm. that will prove that you have a DNA that is different from the, the DNA of this world. Mm. You have Christ's blood running through you. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when, um, you know, we, we get to see the impact mm. of those small actions mm. to the people around us. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And maybe we, as we bring this uh, session to a close today, maybe we'd like to discuss uh, a certain character, um, certain people in the Bible, in the book of Hebrew. Uh, you had mentioned it. You had alluded to it as well. Uh, Hebrew chapter 5, from verses 5 to 11. Uh, chapter 5, from verses 11 to 14. It says this. We have much to say about this, but it is uh, hard to explain because... You are slow to learn. Okay? Mm-hmm. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word. All over again. Mm. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with teachings about righteousness. Mm. Okay? But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Mm. The Hebrews of this particular time had gotten mixed up with the people of the world. Uh, the laws of and the gods of the people of that particular time, that they had started messing around with things that they were not supposed to be messing around. Yes, they were Jews, yes. They were descendants of Abraham, yes. They were a people of God. But there were things that they were doing on the side that would make them, would make a person question them and even then themselves question whether they are true believers. And so Paul tells them that the reason to why they are considered to be immature is because they are not ready to let go of the things of the world. It's because they lack an appetite for a different type of food, a different type of um, a diet. Because if you're always taking milk, example, my child and your child, my child is still on milk and mashed food. Your child has already started chewing. Okay? Mm. Yours is eight months. Ten. Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> How time goes? Ten months. Mine is uh, going to seventh month now. Mine has to take in things that have already been mashed. Mm. Yours can start chewing. Mm. If my child gets, my daughter is called Elaine. If Elaine gets to the year, to the month of ten, as Zach, mm. and cannot start chewing, I will know I'm in trouble. Yeah. I'll know I need to take her to the hospital mm-hmm. to know whether her, her tummy is not developing well, mm. it is not ready to start chewing, that is she having slow growth or something of that nature, mm. but it will be a cause for alarm. Mm. The same case mm. with a Christian. Mm. If a Christian is not willing by the time you're getting to teenagehood, you're getting to youth, 
you're not willing to start going for serious events. You know, cashers, mm. you know, seminars, mm. you know, sitting down for a service that is taking a little longer than two hours. Mm. There is something wrong with you. Our, our teenagers are scared of prayer, of prayer and fasting. Did you know that? <laughs> I, I, can I tell you an example of one of our teenagers whose father confessed to us not very long time ago? Uh -huh. um, the father te tells us that <laughs> the son really wanted to be a priest. Yeah? He, he said that one day I want to be a what? To be a priest. But <laughs> the father gave him a challenge one day of what it means to be a true priest. Prayer and, and fasting. Fast. And it's fa food, fasting food. Fasting not, food. Not at the TV. No, 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 fasting food. food and prayer. After a few days, the son came back to the dad and told him, you know, dad, I'm having second thought about being a priest. <laughs> if this is what it calls yeah. to be a priest. And you know, the young boy loves food. Yeah. He really oh, loves yes, his food. Yes. So if you are not willing and ready to start mm. changing diet, it means that you are not ready to be called a mature word Christian. The same case with the children of uh, the Hebrew time. Mm. They were not willing to let go the things of the world. Mm. They wanted to still continue eating and buy things. You know, those are two things. Biting mm. things of the world and not ready to change diet. Mm. So for you to be considered a mature Christian one, you need to forsake the little things that you are doing behind the Holy Spirit's back. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you need to be ready to start changing diet. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the... Those are my last remarks yeah, concerning this um, day's topic. Uh, thank you very much, Rev. I, 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 I am uh, I'm inclined just, you know, to have just one last thing, probably. Mm. Um, when I think about, for our teenagers especially, the world out here, and I love the way you're saying, they want to bite, bite on the world. Mm. The... The world knows how to take us away from God. Music, movies, the music that they're listening to, the books. I I know I know there's a time we we shared and I said how my dad my dad used to say a sexual scene comes on and be like guys that is dog poop, ah. but we are we are uh, we are willing to take those dog poop dog poops and uh, you know take put it in our minds through our eyes through the things we are listening to yes. through even the conversations we have and I think what yes. you're telling us as teenagers mm. is. The world is going to get us away from Christ. True. And we'll never get to that point of spiritual maturity. Mm. And so long as we continue following the world, we are done for. And I think it's important for our teenagers to understand this. Um, in Romans, Paul writes, Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Of your mind. And I think that's what it means for our teenagers. Mm. We just have to change. I love what you've said change of diet yes we have to change it, diet. it has to happen mm. and and that means building the up this relationship we have with god mm. and it being primary you know like the top thing yeah if it's going to be peripheral there's no way our maturity we're, we're going to be mature in our faith yeah but if it's at the top it's at the center of everything we do mm. then we are growing and that's right so i just love i love the way you you, you know you, you've ended that Change of diet. Change, change of diet. It has to and happen. And you know, if you've noticed today, I've not come in my suit. <laughs> yes. I, I'll tell you the genesis of all this. <laughs> I'm in this class where we are dealing with evangelism to the young people. And we are being taught of how we block young people from coming to Christ. And you've mentioned it, that the world will try to hold you away from Jesus. And the speaker for yesterday told us that one of the things that we keep our young people away from Christ is from our words, mm. the way we dress, the way we speak, the way we carry ourselves. And I thought, my goodness, guys, I, I am not so strict <laughs> that I cannot hug with, with, with my suits. I can change once in a while. You know, today I've come with my <laughs> to North Stars uh, khaki. I don't do khaki uh, over the week, but in the weekends you'll find me with khaki. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to change diet. Mm. But are you, for the sake of Christ, for the sake, uh, just as Paul said, are you willing to stop eating meat? Mm. Are you <laughs> ready to become a vegetarian? Oh God, I pray that this, this, <laughs> this call never comes to me. <laughs> but are you ready to become a vegetarian 
for the sake of other Christians. Forsake the nyamchom and the burgers and the cuckoos for the sake of your brother and your sister. That's what it's all about. Mm. Christian maturity. And how I pray today that the world will not hold you back. Because Jesus said, let the children come to who? To me. To me. Because he knew that the world will try to keep you away from him. They will give you um, the last moment. You know, you know, sometimes I've seen bishops, uh, Salimia, every person who is bringing, you know, um, uh, you know, their offerings and good stuff into the house of God. And when children are coming, you know, the only thing they'll be given is just a pat on the head and move on, you know, a pat on the head, a pat on the head. <laughs> uh, but when, you know, those parents are coming and the adults, they'll be shaken, looked at straight in the eye and even given a message of hope eh, and a blessing. But for the children, it's different. It's because God anticipated it. Christ saw it. That even the disciples themselves will try and put you aside. But that's not Jesus. Jesus wants you to come so that you can have a relationship with him. The church might think that the church belongs to the adults. But you know what? It actually belongs to you. Because you are here. You are the church. And you are the church today. And you are the church tomorrow. And you will influence your children who will also be part of the church. So the way I treat you right now, the way you treat other people right now, the way you treat your neighbors will determine whether we'll have the church in future. Are you mature enough as a Christian, as a teenage Christian, to do the responsible thing to ensure the sustainability of Christianity? Are you strong enough to carry the message of Christ, the good news, to the next generation? Me and Gray, are we doing enough are we doing good? Are we doing well enough to inspire you one day to want to sit here? If we are, please reach out unto us. We'd like to speak with you. We'd like to walk with you and mentor you. Because if we ain't, it means even we are not mature enough to mentor the next generation. I want right. to stop there. Yeah, as always, I think it's important for us to pray for our teenagers, especially as we acknowledge that the world out there is always trying to stunt the growth, you know, the spiritual growth of Christians all over, not just our True. teenagers, but all over, even young people. And I think these are things that God says, you know, all our problems were just sent to him because he's able to, he says his, his yoke is easier. Lighter. He's, it's lighter and his burden is easy and he'll be able to take care of us. So I think this is a time where we need to pray for, mm. for the needs of our teenagers mm. that um, you know, they'll be protected from all the, all the things that are happening around them True. Um, so that they can get that opportunity to grow in their faith, to become spiritually mature Christians. Mm. Guys, le le let us believe and pray that the work that Christ has started in us, he will be faithful to complete it. And at the end of this journey, we will be mature Christians. Let's pray. Almighty and ever-loving Father, we thank you. We adore you and we just want to come before you in all humility, surrendering ourselves, our families, our education, our country, the world into your hands. So that God, out of your mercy, out of your grace, you may act to intervene on our behalf for the glory and honor of your mighty name. We thank you today, Lord, for having spoken to us in such a loud voice about uh, our growth as individuals and as Christians. Our drawing closer to you what it means to you, that it's actually greater than even us achieving our own personal success in this world. And that is why we get to see you calling us, despite of the ages that we are, old and young, you'll, contact, you'll call us back to yourself at the time that you have purposed. But as we wait, dear Lord, for that time that you'll call upon us, we pray that, dear Jesus, you will walk with us, inspire us, feed us with your word through your servants, through your Holy Spirit, through your word, through the times that we get to connect with you through in our meditation. Father God, we pray that you may help us grow 
so that people may see us and glorify your holy name. Father, we thank you for this, Father, that you've brought us, and we are praying for the future that is ahead of us. Lord God, may you help us to become a mature Christian that will help the church to remain mature. We thank you and we believe that you are going to do it in your own timing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Rev, for thank your you. prayer. Um, as we come to the end of uh, today's session, um, be encouraged that, um, you know, uh, God is in all your situations and he is uh, he's aware of the things that you're going through and that he will, you know, he will... He will be there. He's always there walking right next to you. Yeah. Um, yes. As, uh, as we are maturing, yeah. the church is also maturing. Yes. CTC is growing. Yes. And today I am representing Team Red. Man, <laughs> I did not come in my green t shirt today. today. I am representing Team Red. Oh, man. Um, thank you very much for, your, for, you know, for how you guys have supported us. Um, as we look at the CTC, it's just amazing, amazing, amazing what God is doing. Yeah. Um, I just want to inform you that very soon we're going to be talking about this major fundraiser that we have. Um, you know, it's about just giving whatever small thing you have um, yeah. and committing it to God mm. that, you know, he'll multiply. I mean, he did it for 5,000 people. Just two, That's true. Uh, the five loaves of bread and two fish and 5,000 people were fed. fed. Who says he can't do that with CTC? And you know, funny you say that. Can you just... Um, uh, have CTC show on the badge. Uh, the person on this side, we can just zoom. Uh, the tea, as you can see, is as green as it comes. The young people, the teenagers, we are taking up a, a special project of how we are going to build the church. We know that trees were cut down so that CTC could be, could, could be put up. We know that the many things that have been uh, used to uh, build it, some of it are of timber product. And so as a young group, we've decided that we want to build a green CTC. And how do we do that? By helping in planting trees that are going to do what? To replace all the trees that have been cut, okay? So we would like to start as a teens ministry. We'd like to start a tree nursery, okay? And so we want to request all teenagers out there to talk to your dads. On the 1st of November, we are going to come and bring with us at least 10 tree seedlings, okay? Every seedling that we are going to sell to our parents when they are going to plant at home in Ushago, when they are going to plant when the churches have opened, when they are coming to take them up so that you can celebrate confirmation, baptism, and all that, we are praying that all those resources will go towards what? CTC, okay? So I would like to uh, invite you to give towards uh, it and whenever you are giving if you are not bringing it physically you can give through cash and you can give uh, an account name you put C3 C okay C3 C okay if it's a hundred shillings for a tree uh, for CTC wake up C3 C if it's a thousand shillings wake up C3 See, we know for now where I buy trees, most of them go for 100 shillings. So if you're looking at uh, 10 uh, trees, how much is that? A thousand bob? A thousand, yeah. A thousand bob. So talk to your parents, especially now that we are going towards the, uh, the fundraising day, the 1st of November. Um, you can be giving uh, almost, is it every first uh, week of every month? That's when yeah, we in fact, do. today is CTC today Sunday. Today is CTC Sunday. Yeah. So today, talk to your dad and mom. Ask them to give you the 1,000 to send. And in the account name, write C three M T C, and we'll know that one is going towards the nursery. And on the bench, you'll always be seeing those trees just behind us as they pile slowly by slowly towards the growth of CTC. Awesome! Thank you very much. Remember, you can also support a simple something as simple as buying a T-shirt, a red T-shirt. Uh, for CTC. Um, and a green t-shirt <laughs> for CTC. Yeah, you guys have the details uh, down in the description. That's right. Um, for your gifts, your offerings, your tithes, you can always do that Do that through M-Pesa Pay Bill number 30. 
30, 36. The That's CTC right. one is 30, 30, 35. Yeah. Um, and we're so grateful that you've continued to support ministry. May the Lord continue to sustain you, to provide for you, to meet all your needs. Amen. Um, remember, you know, our services are open. If you wish to come and be part of the physical service, we're at You're this welcome. point, we are welcoming you as a family, as an entire family. Um, there is no specific teen service, um, uh, children's service. Just come as a family so long as you're older than six years. Make sure you visit the um, website, cathedral website. Mm -hmm. You'll find the registration link. Um, if you don't still, you, maybe you're having difficulties, you can still come. You'll be sorted out as you're coming in. Yeah. Um, so Karibuni Sana, let's come and have our physical worship um, going on as well. So you're very welcome. It's been wonderful to see quite a number of teenagers coming in and, and being part of the worship. So That's thank you right. very much for, for supporting us. Yes. Uh, and for me, you know, I just wish you a blessed Sunday and that the, the week ahead will be, um, will be fruitful. Yeah. Finally, if you need prayers, if you need somebody to talk to, we are here for you. Please reach us. Our numbers are on our website, uh, our social media handles. We love the fact that you are liking our devotions every morning. Lots of love. Thank you. Um, and we are grateful. But now engage us. Tell us what you are going through. Let us pray for you. We have no other people. We don't pray for your parents. We pray for you. When we come to visit you at home, I know many times you'll show us where your parents are that we can have fellowship. But we've come to visit you. We'd like to sit down with you. Take your bike out. Let's go for a jog together and a walk together so that we can just get to know each other and we pray for one another. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor. May he turn his face towards you and may he give you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. See you next week. Amen.